Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here with this fun painting. Let's get started. Hey guys, so I did it again. <laughs> I did my welcome before we even started. Well, welcome. I'm Stephanie, and we are going to do this fun April shower, storm of flowers. I didn't realize I was going to make a rhyme. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me this morning, and if it's evening where you are, Welcome, and thank you for sh joining me during your dinner time. We are having um, kind of gray and cloudy days and bright sun because it's April, and it's almost April and almost time for those May flowers. So having a spring shower going into those May flowers, I think it's kind of fun. This is part of the acrylic April also, and today's theme was storm. I'm pushing it, but it is a shower. So let's get started on this. I do have a traceable available on my website. All of the links for the traceable patterns, the uh, materials that I'm using. I'm using Arteza watercolor paper. I have Turner Acryl gouache. You can use any paint you have. If you have poster paint, you can do it with poster paint. You can do this with tempera. You could do it with regular gouache, regular acrylic, the acrylic gouache, and you can even do it with watercolor. This one you would be able to put in really easy with just straight watercolor. So you're not limited by any means. You can even draw it with colored pencil or color in this lovely pattern sheet. All of the pattern sheets work out really well as coloring sheets too. So if you have any little ones hanging out with you while you're painting, you can give them a printout and let them color along with you. All right, so I want to get this background put in. Now this time I did put one coat of white acrylic on here and I just used the white acrylic gouache. That was just so that I had uh, the paper sort of tightened back up again. I did it, let it dry. So now hopefully it won't go warping all over. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I really wish that you, that you have a fun day. That's my big wish, that you have fun, that you enjoy your time, and that if you need a little peace, you find it here too. I am going to put in this background with the acrylic wash and I have done it. Now this one was actually done digitally. I just drew this up on my iPad and was like, oh yeah, this is going to be fun. I had some people asking or, you know, saying, hmm, it's going to be interesting to see how you put in the ruffles on the, the flowers with paint. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Hey, this also will work really well as a card for Mother's Day, for um, any of your birthdays that are in April and May, and for any, you know, babies that you want to send a happy little gift for. There you go. You've got a card all ready to go. This background is a very soft kind of teal blue green. Hello. Okay. I'm going to stop and say hello. Hey guys. Hello to everybody who's new here. Thank you so much for joining and hello to my friends who keep popping back in every day. I am going live every day, the month of April and the first of May because it's part of this week. <laughs> so I am so excited. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm just really excited. And so I'm, I'm, chasing squirrels right now. I need my white, burnt sienna, the viridian green, and the thalo blue to start off with. This is kind of a greeny, a greened out blue, not quite a turquoise, not quite a teal. It's mostly blue with just a touch of green in it. So we're going to go with my viridian green here, which is basically thalo blue with a little bit of yellow or with a lot of yellow to make green, but 
anyway, it's it's interesting the way these colors are um, formulated. Actually, I'll need quite a bit of the blue for because I'm going to just get it out for the umbrella also. I am going to be using a wide brush. This is a one inch wide flat wash. It's good for watercolor, acrylic. Uh, it's a basic brush and it's a Simply Simmons and you can get it at like Michaels and online and things. Wedding shower cards too. Absolutely. Great suggestion, Amy. Let's see. I need a little touch of yellow. I am going to go into a closer view in just a second, but I thought you'd like to see the colors going out. My white is almost gone, but luckily I have some white from my uh, Holbein. <laughs> I had to find their name. White from the Holbein acrylic gouache, so we'll be good for that too. And do, 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 do. I think that's all we need for right now. I'm going to go into that closer up view now. Let's see. This. See, I'm trying to make sure that I get things organized so that you can see really well. As well as I can. There we go. All right. So to get that background color in. I'm going to take just a touch of that blue. I did put quite a bit of white on my brush. White? How about water? I put water on my brush. A little bit of that Viridian. It greens it down some. And then now I'm taking a lot of white. We're going to go in a diagonal. If you have a sponge, you could put this in with a sponge. See, look at that. Let your brush go a little bit dry. And then you'll get more of that streakiness that's like the rain. And then look at it and flip it over and see if you like your, see if you like the way your streaks are going one direction or the other, or see if you need to put a little bit more in. There we go. This little umbrella. It's a little bit grayed out down here in the bottom as a shadow. You can actually see it better in the, in the uh, reference right up there above. So what I'm going to do is get some of that blue and then I need a little touch, that blue green kind of color. I need a little touch of a red to gray this out. I just grabbed the permanent scarlet. You can't see that because I just did it under my head. Here. So I just grabbed a tiny little corner of that permanent scarlet and mixed it into my background color. And I'm going to put that down here, just sort of stroking it up. It's going to be under the umbrella area. and sort of round it off out here at this edge. Up here, I don't really care because it's going to be under the umbrella, but I could feather that out a little bit if I wanted to. There we go. So I'm looking over to the side to see what the, what you guys are talking about in chat. All right, so there. Right now, that just looks kind of like um, just a dark splotch, right? Maybe need a little bit more. If you work it too much, you're going to end up working a hole in your color. 
And really and truly the way to fix that would be to let it dry. But of course what I'm doing is not helping. <laughs> so you know what? Now you've seen that sometimes things happen and oh well, we'll just let that sit. I am going to draw this on by hand, but I want you to see, and I am going to resize this because I just, I just realized that that the umbrella actually doesn't fit. <laughs> So I will resize this, but it's a great coloring sheet and it's a great pattern to draw from. Or if you're going to do it on an 8x10, this would be perfect. Um, <laughs> so welcome, welcome. All right, I am going to dry this so I can draw on it. So if you have any questions, let me know. I know I asked that right when I'm doing this and then... There won't be any questions for almost a minute because I'm about a minute behind you guys. All right. There we go. Nice and flat and dry. I think I'm going to be using a watercolor pencil. I don't think the chalk is going to show up up here. Not really. Not so that you guys could see it. So I will use a blue watercolor pencil. First thing we're going to want to do, I am just going to grab a pencil or something. And I am going to decide what is the angle of my umbrella handle. Now the handle goes all the way through your umbrella and that point right there is attached. Straight line. Your umbrella handle can't be sitting over to the side. If it is, then your umbrella doesn't look right based on where this point is. And I'm even a little bit bent here because I drew it freehand. So I'm going to put a line that's about the angle I want my handle to be. This is where the top of the handle is going to be, and down here will be where the point is. So, down here is where the point is going to be. Just resting right on the edge of the paper. And I'm just using the pencil. And I drew on one side, I rolled it and drew to the other side. That way these, this line matches up with up here where the hook is. <clears throat> now I drew that a little bit wide. It's not a problem because this is watercolor paper and watercolor paint in this pencil. So it will just wash away. I'm putting the hook on the top. See, I did that before I even, before I even got my scoop of my umbrella. Now, hmm, I'm going to take something that's round and this is just to give me my basic shape. I'm lining up this there's this cool hole in the middle of this, so I can kind of find where my uh, handle is, line it up, and then bring it down. And that gives me the basic shape. Now, I want my umbrella to actually work its way out a little bit wider. But it can be a little free form. Gives us place to put all of our flowers. All right. And then, since I know I want my flowers to be the star, 
I'm going to go ahead and say, we're going to have a big flower right here. We're going to have a flower that's sort of a half moon going that way and a flower that's sort of a half moon going that way. And the top of your umbrella, nope, see I went too high on that one, but that's okay. We're drawing it. We're figuring it out. And if I don't like a line, I can take my, take a little brush and just say, you know what? I don't really like that line. Let's make that line go away. Let it dry and draw over it. Yeah, let it dry. There we go. All right, so now we have those in. There's going to be a leaf here, and there's going to be like a little leaf tucked in here, and a leaf that will come here and maybe drip down over the edge of the umbrella. Really and truly, that's all we need. I think that my the hook on my handle here might be a little bit shallow. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. Again, I am just drawing this on so that you can see how it's basic lines. It's not hard stuff to do. And use things that you have. This was a spur of the moment. I just thought, oh, we could use that to get the basic shape going. Totally right. There's no extra points for getting it right the first time. Oh, if you are here for the first time though, and you're enjoying what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell down below in that more information box I, below the video. I have all of the ways that you can support my channel and there's fun things coming up on my Patreon. So you might want to be checking that out. On Friday this week, I will be doing a flip through of all of the paintings that I have done this month. And there will be an announcement on how you will have the opportunity to purchase some of these paintings. Thank you for checking that out and coming back every day to see what we do next. I'm going to go ahead and I want to put the umbrella in first and then the flowers. I will be painting right up into some of those flowery bits, but it's not going to be too, too hard to get that back because you saw it was just a circle. I am taking my Prussian blue and a bit of white and just sort of loading it loosely onto the brush. If I was somebody who could do it really well, I would try doing the, um, you know, double loading because then you can get your shadows and your highlights at the same time. But I'm not really practiced at that. So I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to go round and then we will clean up our edges and we will get our lovely little lumps and bumps from the folds and bends in the umbrella. But I am starting at that center point now, work my way up. You can get those areas where the ribs are. You just want to end up with the one in front being the one that's the last one you work on really because it will pull forward as you do that. So there, look at that. We've already got most of our umbrella in. And you can kind of carve with your brush through 
that paint because we have that lighter background. And that right there actually makes it work. Woo! Yay! That was an experiment. Take a little bit of that color out to the edge. And it looks like I'm working my umbrella down. You're not even going to see the little point. All right. What's the difference between gouache and regular acrylic? Regular acrylic paint is semi-glossy, satiny type of finish to it. It's not flat. It's not as... Um, there, it doesn't have a, it has a slick finish texture. Regular acrylic has a slick finish texture. The acrylic gouache has a matte, almost velvety type of texture to it. Some will say chalky. I, um, chalky is a look, is a, um, is an effect of the opacifiers in certain types of paint and it will look after it's dry, it will look like it's got a haze to it. That's what chalkiness is. But velvety, I think, is a better description of like the Turner acrylic gouache and the Holbein acrylic gouache. Those are velvety. They have a almost a soft um, luminescence to them, to my eye. So when it's dry, this looks... Um, almost like it has a soft texture to it. Um, then regular gouache, because there's acrylic gouache and there's regular gouache, and acrylic gouache has polymers in it, acrylic polymers that make it so each layer, when it dries, it's then permanent, and you can layer on top of it, and it won't... Um, oh, thank you. Coffee! So... The regular, the acrylic gouache um, dries in layers just like regular uh, acrylic paint. Then the regular gouache is more like watercolor in that if you layer on top, it will, you can blend down through and lift the colors that were down on the paper before. So acrylic gouache is kind of that um, more like an acrylic paint. Regular gouache is right in the middle <laughs> between watercolor and acrylic paint because a regular gouache has um, the ability to layer their colors on top, but you can go back and re-wet it like watercolor. I hope I didn't like totally, totally confuse people with that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a smaller brush and put in the handle and the handle is going to be with the where'd it go oh it's right here in front of me the burnt sienna i want to put a little burnt sienna out here now you don't have to have all the colors you you could mix a color that was a pretty brown with just your red blue and yellow but you know, if you've got the colors, why not use them? Uh, yay. Thank you guys so much for sharing my videos with your friends. I've been noticing an uptick in the people viewing. I'm taking a little bit of Prussian blue with that burnt sienna. That's going to make my darker color that's the inside of the handle. And going down. I know right now, eh, that looks kind of kind of haphazard, but while it is wet, you can go and move your color around. Just like reg regular acrylic, you can do this too. While the paint is still wet, you can still move things around. I'm going to fill this in with that color and then come back with the burnt sienna 
to really sharpen that up. When you make a drawing and you do the drawing, you can change the drawing, you know? So you are not, you're not tied to my original. You can make your, make this your own. All right. So there, that's. That's feeling a little bit better. We're starting to get a little bit of shape to it. We're not doing a totally realistic type of drawing here or painting. I'm taking some of that burnt sienna now. When I was little, my dad would let me use his big, huge black umbrella that had the long wooden handle in it to walk to school with. And I was this tiny little five-year-old walking with an umbrella <laughs> that was bigger than me. You know, it, it was a standard umbrella, but it, it could have been like a golf umbrella as far as how it, how ridiculous I looked walking with it. Now I'm going to take some yellow And I'm going to put highlight on there with yellow. Because if you think about it, unless you have a really bright light, wood is going to glow in yellow tones, not in, not in bright white. It all depends on the lighting that you're in. But I'm saying this is just getting a soft, soft, warmish light. And I could get totally lost in details. As you know, it's very easy to do. And the handle is not the most important thing on this painting. It's a supporting character. So I need to just... I need to, I say that and then I pick up some more dark because I want to just darken up the inside of that bit right there. Okay, that's enough. Oh, yeah. I want to make this darker down here because it's going to be behind the flower. So get those shadows in first. If you know where the shadow is going to be, There. I don't have to do all of this because it's actually behind the flower, but I want some of it where it's going to be above. <laughs> no, it wasn't a bubble over the top of it. It wasn't a complete bubble, but it, it came down to like, you know, if I was inside, if I was holding onto the umbrella, it probably came down halfway down my body. So it was one of those I'd have to lift up really high and look all around and then put it back where I could walk. Because <laughs> I couldn't walk if it was up too high. If it was up too high, then the wind would catch it. And I had to walk down a little hill onto the playground of the school. So, you know. <laughs> I am going to go and start working on that, those getting my flowers and my leaves in. And I'm going to kind of work my way across. All right, Carrie, you did make it. Yay. And I just dropped my liner brush. I have to pick that up. You guys are going to lose me for a second. I have to go pick up my brush. Uh-oh. Well... I'm not finding my brush. It fell underneath of my table that I'm working on, and there's a cart under it. <laughs> what can I do? No, you're not going to be able to get it. <laughs> it's under... 
underneath everything, I think. All right, so I will grab a different brush. Actually, I'm going to grab the big wide brush. We're going to use Scarlet and Permanent Red and Carmine. Let's rotate that. <laughs> now I've got Mark crawling around underneath and it's, it, it's, it isn't? Okay. Then I don't know where it is. It went into the place where socks go. <laughs> All right. And I'm putting out some carmine. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm in a crazy, silly place today. So now I've got three different kinds of red. I have a really orangey red. I have a basic red, just like a like a primary red, and I have a um, the carmine, which is more like a magenta. And then we have some yellow. Ooh. I want to put these flowers in. I'm going to actually use the brush, this going sideways this way. So first off, I'm going to take and just make a lovely combination of all of those reds to get my basic red. And I'm going to set it down here just to get the idea of where that roughly flower is. Let's see. And I'm letting the bristles kind of bounce out and back. But now I need to get that green leaf in. We're going to have to work our way across and I should have put that leaf in first. That's okay. So, all right, so what I need to do now is go ahead and get my green out. Actually, I have green and I have yellow. So we'll go green, yellow. Loose. Get some yellow and some green on your brush. And we're going to go and do a lovely little green leaf and I'm just sort of tapping the edge of it down. Look at that. Easy peasy. So we've got that flower going in. We're going to go ahead and get that next leaf sort of pushed in. So I just picked up more of the red, the yellow and the green and just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and wiggle this lovely green leaf in it's just a couple dif different little leaves. We can go in and do more details. The flower isn't quite finished. It's almost finished though because look at how pretty that went in. Rinse my brush out. Get my red. And I'm actually, while that green is drying, I'm going to come over here and get that other flower on the outside that's kind of a fanny, fanny shape, fan shaped. Let's not say, let's not go the other way there. Let's just say it's more fan like. And I'm going to go and do wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'm going to rotate by getting those little wiggly bumps. Going like that. It gives us those lovely lovely ridges 
And I'm just taking random dark and light. Maybe give it a little touch of yellow. And we're going to do those little flowers in, in layers. Sort of letting it zigzag its way in. <sighs> yeah, I know. It's kind of like the, um, kind of like the minions. You know, when they say when they say something that could be a naughty word. Wasn't meant in a naughty way, though. So I'm just picking up those colors and going, all right, let's see what see what we get when we go with a little bit more light. <laughs> yes, just like the back end. There we go. All right. And looking at that one going, you know, I think that green leaf there is going to end up disappearing mostly. I've got my brush full of red. I don't want to... I don't want to waste, so I'm picking up a little bit of yellow, and I'll come back in and start giving us some little touches for this front petal. Look at that. Fun stuff. Now, that area behind the the leaf is actually going to be much darker. I will come back in and do those leaves again, but sometimes you have to do layers, you know? There. See how that's starting to glow up now? All right. Uh, thank you so much. I am so happy that people are able to come in and go out and enjoy their enjoy their families, work on their work on things for them. Come back and finish this when you have a chance because this video is going to stay up forever. It's not going to come down. I want I need to get a bit of green going in here for that next leaf. Now remember, I did not do this as a pre-painting, so this is this is one of those we're working it out as we go along. And I'm getting a little bit of that red showing up in there. That's making me happy, actually. Get some green going. Get some yellow. Make that a little bit bigger. Seeing what your brush is doing and then using that to your advantage. Because right now you go, ooh, that's looking a little muddy and a little murky. It's like, it's okay. Big flower is going on in front of all of this. Yeah, this is, this is super fun. It is super, super fun. And it is... Um, something that it's kind of like, ooh, like I just picked up that straight yellow and now I'll pick up some red. Start getting that one glowing up a little bit. 
and we need a little bit of that darker color that's kind of underneath of that leaf. Look at your painting, look at the way the paint is going on, and say to yourself, what would happen if I add a little bit of Prussian blue to that munched up red colors? What could I get with that? Ooh, I get a pretty shadow. Let's go and get that pretty shadow in there. Right now, it looks a little haphazard. It's okay. Because this is acrylic gouache and it has that acrylic polymer in there, you can end up with a little bit of texture from the paint. Um, and that's okay too. So then, look at that. Now that red, oh! really pops forward, but it doesn't block out everything. And we're just getting those sort of ruffles and ridges going in. There you are. So there. Okay, I need to take a slurp of my coffee. A careful slurp of my coffee. That is one of the hottest cups of coffee right now, which is great because it will be hot when I'm all done. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty much dry. That's pretty much dry. The flower isn't, but that's okay. I'm just mushing all of my reds together. I'm going to go and say, I want wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I'm just wiggling this flower in. Those places where it's going over the blue, it's automatically building some shadow for me. And I'm still using that giant flat brush, aren't I? So we will go back in and put a little bit of shadow underneath the edge of the flower. I'm going to have to put a little bit more yellow out. But look how pretty that's. So, you know, we started with this as a digital, like this. And this is where we are right now. It doesn't have quite the same tilt. It's okay. It doesn't have to have the same tilt. I am going to get a little more yellow out. This is the permanent yellow deep. right there and we'll start working some of that yellow in lots of layers but they're simple layers they're not they're not super tricky layers I'm kind of working my way around in a pinwheel aren't I And then I say, you know what? I don't want quite so much bright. So we just keep working our way. There we go. All right. A little touch of darker, you know, uh, I am using my Prussian blue kind of like my black. 
this is going to be that shadow underneath of the of that red bit or of the yellow bit sorry and then I'm just brushing some of this in to those areas where then we'll put a little bit more of the red for the highlight and you'll have shadows in you'll have highlights up we'll put a little bit more green on do I use anything special to wet my paint I'm just using water and uh, and that seems to work for me it if it starts getting really dry I'll use a light mist spray bottle and this little mister spray bottle just happened to be from my eye doctor when I got my glasses I need let's see a little bit more a little bit more green just to bring the that leaf in front of that flower that's behind it <clears throat> and then we can put some more yellow on it after we get it the way we like it it's dark behind But just go in and play with things and go what what would happen if I put a little bit of that color right there if I put a little bit of this darker green in what's going to happen tell you tell you one thing your painting will not blow up if you put a color in the wrong spot there's no explosions in a painting So you are safe when you when you use safe practices in your studio. So now I've got a little bit actually that's too much yellow. So look at that. Taking the yellow on the brush and just sort of pushing it in. To that wet green that's there part of what it's doing is that it's going all the way back to the red so we're getting a mixture of colors but I do want that highlight right out here and kind of in the middle of that leaf flower there little bits of highlight use the corners of your brush to give you your little points on your leaves don't fuss about them too much let's see I think I want that one to come down this way haha -ha, there we go see and then boom a little touch of yellow sometimes that random little spark of yellow just makes those makes those leaves just pop up let's see doop doop do there I'm not gonna play with that anymore I'm going to get my while this stuff up here is drying, I think I'm going to add a little bit more darker blue to my umbrella. This does not have to be a really super involved painting. You can make this much more um, streamlined in the painting of it. Oops. 
Look at that. I pushed my paint way out. Go like this. And then just pull it into the shadow. See? A bit of color in the wrong place is obvious, but if you take that color and you move it around and you put it in other places, then it's not obvious that it was in the wrong place. There we go. See? And then you can go back in and soften up. and work some of that color back because that color on top is actually not dry all the way. It's not cured. So you can work it around. And I think it is time to go to a smaller brush. Start putting, I just want to start getting some layers of color in here. But a lot of what I'm doing right now is just moving around the color that's already there. And a lot of that is water. <laughs> so you're going to move to a smaller brush. And I think it is going to be a smaller flat brush. I'm going to take blue and a touch of white. And now we're going to start shimmering up edges and firming up lines, working in shadows and highlights. And then we'll finish the flower, but you know, that's the cool thing about working on a painting like this is that it is worked in layers. It is worked in areas. And if you notice here, I do tend to work all over the painting at the same time. I'm just picking up combinations of that Prussian blue and white on my brush. And if it's got a little bit of the green in it, that's okay too. All right, there. Now I'm starting to feel a little better. Actually need to bring you out that way just a smidge. See what I did there? I just adjusted. I do want it to be a sharp edge right there and that one right there needs to come out just a little bit also. Sometimes you have to wait until you can get to a smaller brush to refine things. And you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's okay too. Ah, well, happy birthday. Lovely flowers for a birthday are always nice. My birthday is in May, so I, there's always lovely, lovely spring flowers blooming at my birthday. trying to remember what I want to do for my, for the ribs of my, of my umbrella, you know? Now, some of this is actually being painted off on the tape and that is actually good because what it does is that it creates a sense of the world is bigger than this painting. 
it lives outside of the painting. It doesn't have to be contained. I'm going to lightly brush in a bit of that darkest blue underneath of the red and the green and then kind of brush it down where it will, you know, the shadow, the shadow underneath. Now I did make this thing up out of my imagination. So I am using previous knowledge of how things, how colors move and how sh things shine. A, a painting party, a, a painting birthday party would be great. Well, you know what? I'll be painting on my birthday. We'll, we'll call that the birthday party. Because actually, no, I think I'm going to be doodling on my birthday. There might be a little painting in there too. But I think I will be doodling on my birthday. See, we're just working this in layers and going, well, let's see, do I like the colors there? Do I want some different colors? Do I want to make sure things are smoothed out? Do I want to keep them a little more choppy and a little more a little more uh, impressionistic. I can do it. I can do any of those things. At this point, I can still decide. I can always change my mind. That's one of the cool things with acrylic paints and the acrylic gouache. Is you can change your mind. Regular gouache, you can change your mind. When you change your mind with regular gouache, you actually can go almost back to the plain plain paper. When you change your mind with the acrylic, what you do is you let it dry. And see, I'm just picking up dark and then light, and I just keep working it and going, well, hold it, no, the the rib on that would be a little more rounded, so it would come around. Everything's coming from this point right here. And it's always amazing how I can take something so deceptively simple looking and make it so complicated, isn't it? <laughs> But it's not really complicated. It's just layers. It's just layers. It's going to be a fun day birthday. You betcha. I might even make some birthday muffins or something. I've been playing with sourdough. Oh my gosh, I made a sourdough starter. And because I'm gluten-free, that's a real trick. But it's worked so well. I am really excited. We did uh, sourdough pretzels yesterday. And ate them all. <laughs> None to share, sorry. But gluten-free, fresh, soft sourdough pretzels. Oh my goodness. It was quite, quite the treat. I'm not worried if I come off down here. This is on the tape. If you have wet paint, you can move your next color into it and it will blend. And this really is one of those, oh, let's see, am I going to just keep going? Yeah, you can layer. You can layer. Don't forget that you can layer. You know, there are, there are people who they don't layer any of their paint. 
They work very, very meticulously right up to the edges. They use teensy, teensy, tiny brushes and they drive themselves batty. <laughs> but see, I'm layering that lighter color right on top of that blue. Let's get that popping forward. Like that. Like that. A little edge of that darker color. Because we can, because we want to, just because. So I need, what's happening here is that I'm, I'm losing my contrast, kind of losing the plot. So the way for things to look like they have shape, you have to have contrast in it. You have to have some dark, 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 and you have to have some light. So right now I'm grabbing that grabbing that light color. And trying to trying to get some light back in here. Put a little bit of water on that, blend it, but not all the way out to the edge. My umbrella keeps changing its blue tone. The blue keeps changing. So right there, right here, that needs to be like the darkest blue. right up to where that there see it needs to be the darkest blue it actually needs to be almost a almost a black not quite but really really dark underneath that leaf a little bit of that is going to be over here And kind of underneath of a couple spots. Then we start getting contrast. Now I'm going to move back to my Prussian blue with just a touch of white in it, but not much. And just get some of those rib lines put back in. And shadow. Yes, I could keep going back and forth on this as much as I want. I need to step away from it a little bit. I'm getting too up here on top of it, so I need to back up and look. Yeah. Look at my monitor. There, we're going to get some of those highlights in that push back some of those shadows. Because it's not striped, those are shadows, so they shouldn't have a hard edge. And that's where I'm, where I'm putzing with it here. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm taking you on my little journey of figuring this out. It always goes faster if I do it once before, but 
when you're doing it, you've never done it before. So I kind of want you to see what it's like to figure it out. So I hope you don't mind that I'm taking you on my journey of figuring it out. A little bit darker right under there. Soften it up. I'm just using the blue. Whoops! Dark paint or wet paint just flung onto my painting. Just be careful when you're moving your paintbrush. There. So now that shadow is up underneath. I need to flip this upside down <clears throat> so that I can work on some of this under here. Just get it loosely, dry, brushy. Little bit of a line right there. What can I say? You know, I thought this was going to be a one of those quickest paintings. But sometimes you just want to get drilled in, even on a simple painting. So... I guess I wanted to drill in on it today. <clears throat> oh, I'm so glad that you like the journey. All right, I'm taking some of that bright yellow and I've got just a tiny bit of red in my brush and I'm going to give it that pop of yellow right here in the center and then a touch of the red and then a little bit of white right there, okay? We're going to take some of that yellow and the red and give it just a few little highlights, loose, dry. like that. Sometimes if you if you're getting too frustrated with something like I am with that umbrella, I I just started getting kind of frustrated by it. So go work on something else. So now I just have a wet brush and I'm touching some of that wet paint. And the wet brush is just wet with water. So there we go. Just a little bit of the red. See, that's how we get those ruffles in there. And then I'll just take another one of the reds. You can do this as much or as little as you want. You are not not limited. Take that red right back over some of that green, over the shadow, so then it feels like it's underneath the flower. So there we go. <clears throat> A 
All right, so now I'm not as frustrated. I think I can come back and give this boom. Start narrowing your, sh your highlight as you move along. Now that's too much. So then I can come back with just a wet brush. But I just didn't want to get too, too heavy. There we go. See? It's okay. Just doing these little strokes coming across. Kind of working back through the paint just a little bit. Oh, I have discussions with my paintings all the time. Sometimes they're inside my head because I'm doing the painting live and I can't have that discussion out loud. <laughs> you know, we, we all have our strengths with paintings. We all have a place where we're starting from and where we're moving towards. And I'm still a beginner. I am still, you know, I, I always want to be a beginner, I think. Beginners have the most fun. You know, if you go at it as I'm always learning something, even if I've been doing this for years and years, it's okay to say I'm a beginner still, to say that I'm, you know, still learning always learning. It's awful boring if you think you know everything already. See, we're getting there. Sometimes it just takes relaxing and saying, you know, it's okay. You just have to have, like I said, contrast in your painting you need some light, you need some dark. You need to remember to get that back. If you start losing it, just work towards getting back some of that light in the dark. That little edge right there is kind of bothering me because the umbrella wouldn't have a dry brush type edge. So I'm taking just some wet paint right along that edge. Boom. Okay. Get my paint wet so that it moves. That's part of my problem sometimes. I want get a little bit of some colors here that are Tap them in. Take a touch of yellow into a couple colors here. Just want to actually want to brighten it up there. And I may go ahead and put a little bit of white into my yellow. Because I don't want it to be, I don't want these super highlights to be white. I just want them to be a brighter yellow. And then again, I don't want too much of the bright. I want the bright to be where my, my eye goes because your eye will go to the brightest thing in your painting. I 
I'm taking some of that my my red and yellow mix as a surprise down here. Look at that. You would not have expected me to do that, would you? <laughs> I didn't expect me to do that either. It was something a little bit surprising. I'm going to go ahead, rinse my brush, sign this painting, pull the tape, and see what we got. Because I'm kind of excited to see what we got. I am going to... This is just a paintbrush that's been sitting in paint. So no. Well, had to get burnt sand on my hand at one point today, right? Let's see. Let's go for... I guess it can... Be kind of a periwinkle blue. All right, set that down. We're going to zoom out. Pull the tape off and just see what we got. See, by having that tape down there at the bottom, we got that work down. Now, I, I could sit here and work on this and smooth out these shadows and such, and I might do that, but really, I think it's sweet. It's a pretty little painting. You could use this for a card for all of those different little shower type presents, wedding showers, baby showers, Mother's Day, birthdays, just because there's a spring shower and you want to remind somebody that they're loved. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you. If you're new, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, like the channel, like the videos, share the videos. The more you share the videos with your friends and uh, just click that share button below the video, the more you share this with your friends, the more you put them in your playlists, you like them, YouTube sees that, and they share my videos with other people. That's the way the videos get shared. That's the way YouTube shares them. I really thank you so much. Remember that doing something creative, taking care of yourself so you can take care of others is really the best thing you can do for yourself right now. Thank you guys and see you tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Epic photo bomb. <laughs> <laughs>